All right, hello once again. In this video, we're going to be talking about addition reactions to an alkyne. So we're really just summarizing them to kind of help you for this upcoming exam that you have. All right, so here is an alkyne, and we talked about how we can prepare an alkyne from a dialkyl halide in the, in the presence of a base. Right, and remember, we have one, two, three, four carbons. Okay, so. One reaction is hydrohalogenation, right? So if we're adding a hydrohalogen, it's still a Markovnikov addition. And in this case, we're only getting rid of one of the pi bonds. Again, we have one, two, three, four carbons. We have one, two, three, four carbons. If we add one equivalence of the reagent, we're only adding it to one of the two pi bonds. And it's a Markovnikov addition like we just saw. So the bromine will add to the more substituted end of that pi bond, right? Well, if we end up adding two equivalents of hydrogen bromide or an excess amount of hydrogen bromide, what we end up getting, so I'm just going to write, suppose we have an excess amount of hydrogen bromide or two equivalents of hydrogen bromide, right? Then we get rid of both pi bonds and we're adding both bromines to the more substituted end of that carbon-carbon double bond. It's like you went from here to here. Okay. So that's hydrohalogenation. Again, this could say one equivalence. This could say two equivalents. So let's just now, this could be two equivalents. Still the same thing. This could have said one equivalent. Still the same thing. Right? So keep those in mind. So that's hydrohalogenation. Now what about halogenation reaction? Right? In halogenation, again, we could be using one equivalence or two equivalents. And if it doesn't say one equivalence, we do assume that it is one equivalence. So one of the pi bonds are used up, and then we have two bromines across one of the two pi bonds. If we go in and we add an excess amount of bromine, right? So suppose we have an excess amount of bromine, of halogenation, then we get rid of that pi bond, and then the reaction will happen once again, right? So then we have another bromine and another bromine, okay? So. In halohydrin formation, which was one of the reactions we had talked about as well, um, and our reagent is bromine and water, right? And if we're only adding one equivalence, then we're only getting rid of one of the pi bonds, and then water, or mean hydroxide, adds to the more substituted end, and bromine adds to the less substituted end of that carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so if we have an excess amount of hydrohalogenation, then again, you're going to get rid of the second pi bond and you're going to have the same reaction happen once again, right? Which would be a simple addition reaction to an alkene, if you notice. All right, so those reagents are very similar to addition reaction to an alkene keen, except that you're doing the reaction twice because you have two pi bonds. That depends if you have one equivalence or two equivalents, right? And in addition reactions, an excess amount is really the same thing as saying two equivalents, unless you had another pi bond somewhere, right? Then it's going to add to that pi bond as well if you have an excess amount, right? If you have two equivalents, it will react with two pi bonds, right? If you have an excess amount, it will react with all the pi bonds that are present. Okay, so now what about hydration reaction? Okay, acid catalyzed hydration to an alkene, to a carbon-carbon double bond, is in the presence of sulfuric acid in water. So we write it as hydronium ion. But for an alkyne, the reaction is too slow, just as an acid catalyzed reaction. So we end up adding um, mercury sulfate, right? as a catalyst to speed up the reaction, right? And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
we call it some Markovnikov addition, right? Where water typically adds to the more substituted end of that carbon-carbon double bond. But also recall that we said that that's an enol, and enols are not very stable, so they're very quickly taught to rise into the keto form. So instead of adding another hydroxide, what happens is that we end up forming a keto group, right? Acids catalyze hydration to an alkyne. The hint is perhaps that there is mercury sulfate and it will form an enol, but the final product is really the keto because the enol will very quickly tautomerize into a keto group. All right, what about an anti Markovnikov hydration or what we refer to as hydroboration oxidation? Right? And recall that has two reagents, right? In step one, it's the hydroboration. And in step two, it's oxidation. It's in the presence of a peroxide and under acidic conditions. It's an anti-Markovnikov addition of water. So about what happens is one of the pi bonds will be used up initially and water or hydroxide will add to the less substituted end of that carbon carbon double bond, but it's forming an enol, which is not very stable, and that enol will very quickly convert into a keto group, right? So it's an anti-Markovnikov hydroboration oxidation, right, to an alkyne. It gives us a less substituted alkene, I mean less substituted um, keto group, and hydration in the presence of mercury sulfate gives us a more substituted keto group, right? Perfect. And those are really the reactions from chapter 11.